What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Hockey Town University. You're here with me, your host, Zach, once again, and you're here with my lovely co-host, Derek and Matt Leslie. Thank you for joining us once again. For those of you that are returning, for those of you that are new, thanks for joining us. We appreciate you stopping by. Just make sure you're hitting that subscribe button right there. That really does help us out. Smash the like button as well if you like what you hear and what you see wherever you're watching us, whether if that's on YouTube or Spotify. And if it's on Spotify, make sure you're hitting the five stars button. That really helps us out. Boys, welcome back. How's everyone doing? Derek, Matt, nice hat, buddy. Both of you. I didn't get the memo. What's going on? Man, it figures like the one day that we both wear hats, you're not wearing a hat. And it feels like every day I see you, you wear a hat. So I don't know why you didn't do that, Zach. Maybe you should have, uh, I don't know, incorporate hats more into your outfit, I guess. Maybe it's just a no hat day for you. But yeah, uh, I'm doing good. Um, I don't think I have anything going on. My life is pretty boring. Um, oh, I did watch my Islanders, uh, refuse to get eliminated last night. So that was pretty nice. Uh, I, I'm not going to lie. They probably still will. And I'm kind of banking on them doing that, but it's nice to still get at least one more game in. So that's great. Derek, don't be so eager to give us how you're doing, buddy. Ugh, I mean, I was waiting there for Leslie because he yelled at me last time because we keep talking over each other. So I was like, nice I'll stand off <laughs> like I'll awkwardly stand here, stare at the screen and wait. But boys, uh, first half day. Well, technically a half day for me. I got off work three hours early and over a year. It's been great. I've only done chores and worked out and I hate my life actually now. So it's been fun. This is my one thing I get to do at the end of the day that relaxes me a little bit because I get to talk crap about hockey players and I love it right now because we got a, I mean, at least a good amount of news to talk about and some fun people we get to discuss with us today. So I'm pretty excited for that. Yeah, for myself, you know, just another normal Wednesday. Yeah, we're recording at 7.45 p.m. Wednesday night, 4.26.23 um the florida panthers are currently playing the boston bruins i believe the panthers are still up one to zero then you have the seattle kraken versus the colorado avalanche tonight go kraken i'm a crackhead abs you suck yeah i want them out so what we got in store for you guys today we have a little bit of red wings news we're still just patiently waiting for the nhl draft lottery leslie tells us every day he's our little countdown bot for us how many more days are left he's just as eager as the rest of us are. Um, other than that, we have some around the league news. We'll touch on the playoffs, the world championships for the U18s. And then today, we also have our mock Red Wings opening night roster. We'll touch on that as well. And then we have a draft prospect profile for Leo Carlson as well. And then we'll touch base on what's upcoming for us on Hockey Town University because it's summertime. There is not much to go over. You guys will realize that on this episode. I figure it's going to be a somewhat short one, not an hour 45 like the last couple that we've done. Uh, Derek's face uh, expresses pain, as you can tell. So, yeah, let's go ahead and kick right into it, boys. So, Red Wings news. Gustav Lindstrom is actively searching for a place to go back to Europe to play. The news comes from Ice Hockey Gifts on Twitter early Monday. Is anyone shocked? I'm not. This was the player that I gave nope. a really bad grade to. Right-handed defenseman, he's like 25 years old, just could not insert himself in the lineup after this season. Um, I'm not shocked. Derek, you're not shocked? Leslie? I can tell you right now, he's not in my mock draft. That's for sure. <laughs> well, actually, I did read this news yesterday, and I was like, okay, well, that makes sense. He was never really going to be any better than he is now, and there's just no spot for him in the roster with all our prospects. Now that I see the news today, and maybe this is a good segue to the next topic, that the Red Wings are going to be playing two games in Sweden, I have a galaxy brain idea. He's going to go back to Sweden, he's going to have like a little sabbatical, and walking out the tunnel, he's going to be the first one leading the Red Wings on the ice, in the wing wheel, and he'll score a hat trick. That was a little revelation I had this morning when I woke up and saw that news. I will be shocked, and that that will be now my segue going into it. I did not have that coming up next, but Leslie's right. Yeah, the NHL, announced, <laughs> the NHL announced its global series in Sweden this upcoming season. That features Detroit, Toronto, Ottawa, and Minnesota. Detroit 
will be able to play two games. Those two games will include Toronto and Ottawa. So let me ask you boys, thoughts overall on the idea of playing NHL games over in Sweden or just in Europe in general? I love it. This is one of the things that I've been wanting for quite some time. Uh, I, I noticed that the NHL has been doing it for a few years now. Pretty sure the NBA does it as well. So it's about damn time. In a minute. I think I'm about every play. major sports league does that. Yeah. I mean, my real question about that whole thing is right now, and Zach, this is homework for you. Are they playing on NHL ice? Or are they playing on those ma- massive Olympic size rings? Because I really hope it's the Olympic size rings because I want to see them all die out there. That'd be a lot of fun, honestly. Yeah, that's a very good question. I would enjoy seeing them playing on the bigger rinks like they do in Sweden. You know, the Olympic size, like you said. Um, But I'm assuming that they probably won't. It'll probably be regulation NHL size, which, boo. That's no fun. You're in Sweden. Come on. Might as well have some fun with it. Yeah. But yeah, I like it. I think it's great for the game. I think it only helps it that much more, and it gives more exposure to the NHL. Maybe it'll get some of those people over in Europe to... Subscribe to Bally Sports and the NHL Network. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> well, they won't be doing that because they're going bankrupt. Yeah. Yeah. We'll save that for another day for sure. But um, so let's go ahead and move on. Another Red Wings news. Pontus Andreasen. Um, Derek probably doesn't know who this is. Leslie, I'll be surprised if you remember this guy as well. But I think he was signed. Barely. In the free agency last year. But he was playing in Sweden. Anyways, he he will be going back to play in the Swedish Hockey League uh, with, oh boy, Lulea. No, yeah. Good enough. (laughs) He played with Grand Rapids Griffins. He put up 25 points in 63 63 games. Uh, Just couldn't really figure it out, unfortunately. It is what it is. So, yeah, he's going back to Sweden. Um, He'll be missed slightly, maybe by some. Not. Me, unfortunately, but I mean, whoever bought his jersey will definitely miss him. Those poor fool, fools. I All right, really hope no one did. <laughs> All right, so that's it for the Red Wings news. Other than that, yeah, we're just patiently waiting for the NHL draft lottery. So, all hail Magic Conch, hard for Bedard, silly for Fantilly. Say it with me, folks. All hail Magic Conch. All hail the magic conch. That's beautiful. You're welcome. Wow, I didn't know you had that in you. I got oh you guys. My. I'm here I'm to serenade to... you. I'm going to have to make that alone, like a short clip. That was amazing. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I'm going to make that my text tone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's, let's go, go ahead and jump chat. into the around the league news. Uh, other than the announcement of the global series in Sweden, I, like I mentioned in the last episode, that uh, the U18 World Championships continue on tomorrow for the quarterfinals. USA, Czechia, Finland, Slovakia, Canada, Switzerland, Sweden, and Latvia all make it to the quarterfinals. Then you got Norway versus Germany for the regula- relegation round, if I could say that properly. I almost said re- <laughs> regulated. <laughs> regulation. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, th- those are exciting. Um, Team USA, I don't know what they got in their water. I think they stole the secret sauce from Michael Jordan and Space Jam or something because I don't know for those of you that are watching if you guys have been keeping up, but let's just go ahead and jump at this. this dit- oh my goodness, the statistics, my boys. Buddy, oh, are my you goodness. okay today? Someone else has to be the moderator, I think. If I do it again, just move into the middle frame for me because uh, I'm getting knocked out. But uh, yeah, Team USA, they're the highest point total player so far in the whole entire tournament. USA has four of them. They got Gabe Perot with 15 points, Will Smith, 15 points, Ryan Leonard, 13 points, Cole Eisenman, a 24 draft prospect. He's got nine points. He's got eight goals. He leads the whole entire tournament in goals, which is insane to think that someone that young can just come in here and just put up that kind of point production in terms of goals. Then, of course, you got Otto Stenberg, nine points as well. He's captain for Team Sweden. Dalbor Dvorsky, that's a high prospect. He's a center prospect going into this draft for Team Slovakia. Four games, he's got eight points as well. Then I don't know if you guys knew about this player. He caught me off guard, but when I saw the video from Elite Prospects on Twitter about him, 
Kasper Haltunen, I believe that's how you pronounce it. He plays out of Finland in four games. He's got five goals, three assists for eight points. The video that I saw, this kid's got a mean slapper. When I saw his prospect profile, I'm pretty sure he's like 6'3", like 200 and something pounds already. Like he's a big boy and he's projected to go in the later and how round. Old is so he? Maybe that's someone that fits uh, Red Wings mold right there. What, Derek? How old is he? Is he an 18 year old or a 17 year old? Uh, 18 or 17. Yeah. Playing in this tournament. I'm pretty sure he's 18. He was playing out of the Finnish, uh, men's league too. Oh, what big a boy. giant. Yeah. Big boy. They got, huge boy. yeah, they got some big players in this draft. Um, then you got Matt Wood. He's got seven points in four games and then some other notable names, Callum Ritchie. He's got seven points. Uh, Oliver Moore finished with six points in the four games and, Axel Sandin Pelica, like I said, that's one of my top right-handed defenseman prospects that I've been looking at for the Red Wings to draft. He finished the four games in the preliminary rounds, six points in that uh, set of games. So if you guys are interested in watching that, that does kick off tomorrow morning at 6.30 in the morning. Uh, that starts off with USA versus Team Czechia. I'll set my alarm. I'm about to yes. say, I might be able to watch some of that. Will I? Probably not, but... You were, no, you were I, the I one... The you, other, will. you were the one the other episode that said that you have to be at work and everything. Look at that. You start work at what? Like 8 or 9? You can watch this one, for sure. Sit down and watch that one while you're eating your bowl of oatmeal and your grapefruit and your and your nice instant coffee. How and your old little do you think I am, my man? Yeah. What the heck is going on with that statement? <laughs> and, your, and your little nightcap and your flannel pajamas. I like aged 80 years with you just saying that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and move on. Let's talk about some playoffs. So let's do a little update. Thoughts? No one's been knocked out yet. Yeah, well, like, yeah, we're, we're definitely in the full swing in the playoffs. Uh, Dallas absolutely dominated Minnesota last night with a 4 nothing shutout. That was really nice to see. I am not a fan of Minnesota whatsoever and a lot of the players on that team. And, you know... I am rooting against them, but I do have to acknowledge the fact that Minnesota just across all four major sports just seems to be the most down in the dump city for sports I've ever seen in my entire life. They are consistently having heartbreaks in the playoffs, or if it's not that, they're losing in the finals. So I do feel for the city of Minnesota, but the Wild, I hate your guts. I hate you, Matt Dumba. I can't wait to see you guys eliminated. And my Isles, man, they may just do it. They may possibly just do it. Will they do it? Probably not, but they could do it. I was totally waiting for them to just have an embarrassing defeat last night, and what happened? They gritted out a win, so that's nice to see. And I think really the only other major story is Michael Bunting is back from his suspension, and in the game tomorrow, he's already been scratched. So I can't really say that I'm too surprised to see that. He's a gigantic liability out there on the ice, and when if Toronto does somehow... Well, I guess they have a 3-1 lead, so they could easily do it. If they do win this series, I think you'll see him back, but he's going to definitely have some sheltered minutes. I wouldn't be surprised as even if he's even playing in the bottom six. I think that's how badly he's in Sheldon Keefe's doghouse. I think also it just kind of speaks to the fact that this summer, there's not a chance in hell that he's being re-signed by that team. They've seen enough of him. I have to imagine that the coach and maybe even Kyle Dubas has sat him down and said, listen, kid, we know what you're trying to do out there. But it doesn't work, and I know you're not going to stop. So for as long as we're in the playoffs, you sit there, you look pretty, maybe fill up the water bottles on the bench, open the gate when the players are changing, and uh, best of luck to you in the future. So that's pretty much all I have with the playoff roundup. Um, a lot of exciting series. I think maybe just the only one that's going on now, the Boston and, uh, and Florida. Not too exciting, but Florida did steal a game. So no sweeps this year. That's nice to see. It feels like you always have at least one sweep in the first round, but they've been more or less pretty close series. So I always love seeing that. Yeah, yeah, I'll agree with you on that. I think it's really nice to see that there's been no sweeps so far this year. Uh, granted, it is only the first round, so we'll just have to wait and see. Maybe the next round has more in store for us when uh, uh, Toronto gets to face off Boston in the second round. That's my prediction now looking at it. <laughs> Three to one for both yeah. those series. Um, my, my, the one that I'm really excited about now is the fact that New Jersey came back. 
They were down 2-0. Now they tied it with New York. I had New Jersey winning that series. A lot of people kind of doubted me due to better in presence. I just kind of took a shot in the dark with that and thought maybe they could be the wild dark horse because of all the young talent that they have on their team. But granted, they still have Meyer. They have Dougie Hamilton and Thomas Tatar. <laughs> I don't really know too many other players on their team. I mean, I know that they have Jack Hughes and they have his brother who hasn't been playing. And I know that's something that's been on everyone's mind, why he hasn't been playing. And that's a very good question. I don't know why, but I think that's something they might have to look into if they end up going one more game down, you know, do whatever you have to do to make sure that you get into the next round. So we'll have to see about that one. And Edmonton is finally breaking past the LA Kings. Finally, they're up three to two on their series. So that's, I, I'm calling it right now. I think that's going to go to game seven. I think that's a lot closer than it uh, should be, uh, especially someone who had the Oilers sweeping them. <laughs> and I think Derek did too. But yeah, the Vegas Golden Knights are also up three to one in the series with Josh Morrissey being out for the rest of the series. So uh, I'm pretty sure for the rest of the playoffs too. So that sucks. Um, yeah, go New well, yeah, Jersey. Definitely the rest of the playoffs if they lose this game. For sure. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Yeah. What about you, Derek? Yeah, this is the hard-hitting analytics you come here for. I mean, with what I'm watching in the playoffs so far, there's only a very few games that I really do want to watch right now before the second series. Of course, we got the Golden Knights. I'm honestly, I'm just watching them just to humor myself at this point. We all know they're probably going to win, especially with Morrissey out, like we just said. But then, like Matt said, the Toronto Maple Leafs the entire time I've been watching that series just because they've been beating the crap out of each other. Like, come on, why can't you just throw? bunting in this game like i know he's a dummy and you don't want him in there or anything like that we want him to blow there. it out of the water for you guys get you another yeah well, as the consumer of the tv we yes we do but as the people who want to win a cup and don't want another five minute major i understand why they're not going to let him play right now they're going to let him cool down and you know maybe we'll see him in what is it game six no, wait, what game are they on? Six. Someone help five, me. Five, I think. Five. Five. I don't game five. I'm paying attention. Oh, yeah, then I'm There's right too much there. hockey. You know, it's a lot. Game six, and then I'm hoping to see him back in there just so he rustles some more feathers. I want to see more fights just in that game alone. But the other good one right now, like you guys said, is the LA and the Oilers right now. Oilers are finally coming back because what the hell has been wrong with them? They have the top performers in the entire NHL on their team. And for some reason, they're just getting beat up by the LA Kings. The team I thought at the beginning of the season was going to be another dud. Yeah, But look at them wanna, now. Do we want to talk about that for a second? That Leon Dreisaitl, out of the 300-point getters that they had, only Dreisaitl is the one that's actually showing up. Granted, McDavid looks good night in, night out, but he's I mean, unable to finish. Point per game. Yeah, so like, do we want to every, talk about he's that? He's been out there bit? for every single goal, too. That's the best part. Yeah, I saw that, too, which is even more ridiculous. So uh, a lot of people seem to think that Dreisaitl builds off of McDavid, but does this kind of put the haters to rest, that Dreisaitl is able to do this when McDavid isn't following suit with that? I think really what this just goes to show is, like, this LA Kings team is really entirely built on stopping Connor McDavid in the playoffs. Then you have to consider the fact that if everyone is covering McDavid and trying to shut him down, you still have Leon. You still have Evander Kane, Zach Hyman. Uh, who else am I forgetting? Nuge, Ryan Nuge and Hopkins. You still Evander have those Kane. four who are goal scorers. You can't cover it's, them all. You can only hope Kane to contain them. And there was a 6-3 loss for the LA Kings last night, so they are not doing that very well. Um, I originally predicted this series to go in seven, I think it still could. I think LA may be able to steal a game, but I wouldn't be surprised if Edmonton just closes it out the next time they meet. They've looked really, yeah. really good. I mean, yeah, they've had some slow starts, and they've kind of had some head-scratching performances. But I think at some point, they just got in the locker room, and they were like, listen, guys, we're the Edmonton Oilers. All we do is score goals. Why are we not doing that? Let's go do some more of that. And they did, and it's working. And I believe that I was mean, you know their GM we... just came in and gave him a pop talk. Yeah, Sorry, Zach. I, no, you're okay. You're okay. Yeah, no, and I think that was something that I can't remember if it was on or off camera that we talked about where 
all Edmonton really has to do, we know that they don't have the greatest goaltending. You know who else didn't have the greatest goaltending? Last year was the Colorado Avalanche, and they went all the way through just by scoring the hell out of each team that they played against. So if that's the recipe for the Oilers, they have a very good shot. Let's say that they do beat the Kings, and then they have to play Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah, I think that they could outscore Vegas. And I, to be honest with you, I think L.A. probably has the better defense over Vegas does. In terms of goaltending, I'm not really sure. I, I would have to look more into that. But with the way that the Oilers are scoring every game, I mean, what, it's three-plus goals every single game, four-plus goals every single game? That's going to be tough for Vegas to match any team. It's going to be tough for any team to match, especially in the playoffs. So if the Oilers can continue to do what they're doing, it's going to work for them. So I, I, McDavid and some of these other players, like Leslie mentioned, they just have to figure it out. If it's not later in this series, then it's going to, it's going to have to happen in the next one. If not, they're going to be out. It's that simple. I mean, they really just got to learn to get McDavid out there again because LA is doing a great job of covering the one person they need to cover out there. And we've noticed that he's, I mean, he had one game where he scored two goals. Of course, the only goals, though, for the entire game for the Edmonton Oilers, LA came out and I think scored like five or six. So it didn't even matter. It was cool seeing those pop up everywhere. Like, oh my God, look at McDavid start popping off two goals a game. You open those links, it's like, they they lost by a lot. <laughs> Why don't you talk about that aspect? Like, I get it. McDavid's McDavid. You want to hear about him popping off every time he does it, but at the same time, it doesn't really matter at this point because L.A. is doing such a good do- job at, like, defending him on everything he's doing. Yeah, and uh, I wonder if the game plan, like, now or maybe within the first couple games in was that Let's just have McDavid do the best that he can. And so that way the LA Kings just prioritize all their energy, just trying their best to shut down McDavid and then thus leaving everyone else open. So I wonder if that's how Dreisaitl is just able to do what he's able to do. I mean, this kid's on a tear. I mean, maybe they just don't think he is the highest caliber as McDavid, which would be a massive mistake just by his point total in general. Like, obviously he's like a bigger playmaker than McDavid, but... He put the puck in his hand. The kid got some mitts. He will score, skate around everybody and shoot in the back of the net without you even seeing it. So, like, L.A. got to do a little bit more on covering that first line than just the top scorer in the entire team. Or I guess you can say league. But you got to do a little bit more if they want to pull this off, which obviously I don't think any of us are anticipating they do. As we have Edmonton going all the way. I think the other problem that Edmonton, or not Edmonton, that LA is running into is they also spend a lot of time in the game trying to shut down all those players that they kind of sacrifice their offense. So when they're down two or three goals, they then can't do that strategy of like, well, let's just cover all these guys and just try and get them as little chances as possible. And then they're like, oh, wait, now we have to go get chances of our own. So it's kind of like you can't play it both ways it's almost impossible to play the hockey game both ways and unfortunately that's really what you have to do when you're a team of LA's caliber to beat the Oilers and obviously it's not working I really see the only team that can stop the Oilers in this playoffs is the Bruins and I do have the meeting in the Stanley Cup finals but I still think that that four that big four that I mentioned and that's not even to mention Evan Bouchard and uh who's the other guy uh Ekholm the two very, very good defensemen. I mean, they, they put a lo- up a lot of secondary scoring too. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I think Boston may be able to match them because they are a very good defensive team as much as they can score. And both their goalies are just playing lights out. I still have Edmonton beating them though. It'll it'll be a series. It'll be a bloodbath. But I think it ends up in David holding the cup. Yeah, five five goals in the finals. One, one nothing goals. games. Thank you, Leslie. Actually, you know what? Here, here's a new prediction. I think Edmonton's going to sweep them. In the final game, it's 2 nothing. How about that? Oh, I love it. That's beautiful. Oh, a sweep in the final game of the playoffs. That would just... Has that ever happened? Yeah. Um, I think it was when the Lightning won their second cup against Montreal. Maybe that was their... No, that was their second against Montreal. 
in the bubble. That was a sweep. And then yeah. it was that one weird year when all the Canadian teams are playing each other, so there had to be one Canadian team in the final. How horrible is that? It's like, well, Canada, yeah. I am so sorry. Well, you get one team that'll make it, but that's it. Blame COVID. And, and they Bethlehem. won't get that for another 10 years. Watch. They won't no, get that until know. the next pandemic. Sucks the suck. So, now that we're done with that, let's kick it off. Let's see some mock Red Wings opening night rosters for the 23-24 season. But first, let's break down the rules. So, the boys had a little fun with this. Derek had a lot of questions. He wanted to make sure that he was doing everything that he wanted to do because I believe that he's got maximum chaos on his opening night roster. So it's the rules are simple. Bad. The rules are simple. You were only able to use players that were signed into the 23-24 season and beyond, so you could not use any players that are not currently signed after this season. You can use prospects from Grand Rapids Griffins and the Toledo Walleye. You cannot use any free agents. You cannot make any trades, and you cannot use any prospects that you think that we would get in this draft. Even though we want Bedard and Fantilli, sorry, we can't use them. I had to change it up quite a bit because of that. So, does anyone volunteer to go first? Oh, Leslie I do. Can go first. I do. Oh, the peanut gallery over there. He's ready. All right, guys. I'm so excited to show you guys this project. I've been working on this for a whole 10 minutes. Uh, okay, here we go. You guys see that? Oh, wait. Hang on. I didn't click it yet. All right. So here we go. Yes, I added a few emojis because I was a little bored and I was waiting for you to send me the invite. But here we go. There she blows. Um, yeah, so I have this first line. I think it's about the same as what it was when we ended the season with Perron on the first line. I think Daddy P looked really good on the first line. I mean, he got a hat trick as soon as he moved to the first line. So that's pretty cool. Like, honestly, a lot of his late season production just kind of came from playing with Larkin and Raymond. And the second line, I got Bergeron up there. I really think that Bergeron is going to take a big step forward next year. And he's going to be a really big piece of this lineup moving forward. I did put Rasmussen at center. Just because I couldn't really think of whatever what other second line center we would want, I'm not sold on him as a center. I think he's much better as a winger, but oh well. Just for the sake of this experiment, I'll put him there. And Kubalik as his left wing. I think Kubalik is really just year in and year out going to have a 20 to 25 goal scoring potential. And I think playing with these two players, he could get there. Maybe even as high as 30. He's done it once before, so. We'll see if he can do it again. And the third line, I do have Casper making the team. He will take over as our 3C. And we have Cop moving to the wing, who I think myself and also Zach really want to see Cop on the wing. We think that he's just a lot better as a winger. And we'll see how that goes next year. And I also have Soderblom playing with Casper. I was uh, kind of debating whether the flip-flop him and uh, Zadina. But I think that Soderblom, he's younger, and let's face it, at this point, I have more faith in Soderblom putting up points in the NHL over Zadina, so he gets a third-line role. And there is my fourth line. Yes, we do have our favorite bus, Zadina, on the fourth line. I'm sorry, Zadina, I don't want to be too harsh, but it is what it is. Go out there and prove me wrong next year, and maybe I'll start training you better. <laughs> and... uh I, I think I might have broken the rules a little bit here because Suter is an expiring UFA. But I I think they re-signed him in the summer out of all of our expiring free agents. I only really see them re-signing him. I just think that he's a really good value add. Uh, no, I did not put Chase on down here. I think Chase on, cool. We got him off the couch. He scored some goals for us. We shook his hand and he went the other way. So that's great. And moving on to the defense, Wallman and Cider. That's a no-brainer. I mean, there's nothing I really need to say about that. If you break up that pairing, you are you probably should be put in a straitjacket and locked up in the loony bin. Uh, I had to put Sherat somewhere. I guess I'll put him on the second pairing with Mata. I don't 
I don't really want to put them with any of our young prospects because, I mean, what a what a way to introduce yourself to the NHL <laughs> to play with the boat anchor himself, Sharat. Absolutely not. You're better off. You're better off going back to Sweden and playing with Sharat in your first season. And then I have Evanson, and uh, that's Albert Johansson. I don't know if you guys could tell from that. I guess I could have just typed out his name. I don't know why I didn't, but Ajo. there you go. He's on the bottom pairing. I do know that he is supposed to be a left D. I have heard rumors that he can play on the right side. I don't really know if Eisman wants to do that with a young guy play the whole season on the right side. But, I mean, look at the situation. Who else is going to play on the right on the bottom pairing? It's got to be somebody. So I picked Aljo and Edvinson. I think he'll be good on the third pairing. There you go. Not really much else to say about that. Huso is our starter. Literally anyone with a pulse, Zach, Derek, you guys can hop in Nut. I literally do not care. You can back up Huso. And then we have Ned because I can't use any other goalies, and I'll be damned if I'm using Hellberg. So there you go. That's my list. Leslie, uh, yeah, Leslie, you added a little more. I didn't expect uh, backup goalies, too. I only put one on mine. Um, Derek, why don't you go next? Let's see your uh, maximum chaos list, buddy. Oh, you want to see my beautiful list? I mean, I can't Try lie. Try top me. I was to say, me and Leslie both have very uh, similar, maybe like one line in there. But I that's how it's that, for all of us. Yeah, I mean, there's not much. I mean, a few of them. I'm not going to lie. We actually did match up on. Let me figure out how to pull this bull crap off. Did I do it? I can't. I can barely see. There we go. There's that beautiful list. Just for everybody to see there up top. So oh, how lovely. So obviously oh. nothing has stayed the same from the end of last year, or I guess this year. We have a little bit of difference in everything. I got someone new coming up in the prospects on every single line, except for the defensive line at the bottom, the first line. I will keep that the same Walman Insider. I'm not going to change that up. I love how you spell Bach, Derek. (laughs) You like my laziness of spelling? I could really go back and change it right now, but I'm not going to because I don't care that much. Go and change it. All right, go on. <laughs> All right, boys. So, of course, we got our first line. Not changed up too much, except for a very special uh, guest star up there, Marco Casper. I know he played a whole one game with us this season, but I'm feeling good with how he started, so I want to toss him right up there in the first line. We got a boy that's a great playmaker. We need that with Larkin, so obviously I'm tossing him up right up top. Get him going. Let's see how he can do right away. Then we got our second line here. Carter Mazer, of course. I heard. I know he plays Ween in there a little bit. Of, I think I'm actually thinking of Casper who plays. No, wait. It's Mazer. Mazer plays center too, right? I believe so, yeah. Thank you. So that was the one I was thinking, because I know he does play a little bit of the wiener once in a while. So I'm going to start him off. Second line left wien with Coop and Perron out there. Just because every one of these new guys, I want to have some old boys with too. So they get a little more experience. But those are going to be our top producers out there. And then I also cheated a little bit with uh, Leslie here. I got Suter on the third run right now with Valeno. That I'm still hoping comes back. I got two, I got a bunch of cheats here. I'm not going to lie. And, but, as you can see, we got Soderblom on the third line right wing. Just as Leslie had him. I want to see that behemoth out there destroying people and putting the puck in the back of the net. I just want him to be the next Chara that just strikes fear into everybody who has to go against him. And I think he'll do great with that on the third line to start off. And then, of course, we got what Leslie calls our bust on the fourth line. Good old Zadina coming in on the wing over there. And then our center. I got one of our another prospects coming up. Lombardi, baby. Killing it out there. This is actually a legitimate one that I might think could happen after the training camp and whatnot. Maybe bring Lombardi up just to center like the bottom line with my boy Chase on out there. The power play wonder. I do not want to get rid of this man. I don't care if I got to peel him off the couch myself again. 
I will put a back of mine team on that fourth line. Those five games I watched him right as he started were beautiful. And I just instantly fell in love with this pile of poop on the couch. Like, let me tell you. <laughs> well, now let me do technology because now I got to figure out how to move stuff down. Oh, don't look at my other notes. It's a secret. Then look at our beautiful D. The only line I didn't change from the beginning or the end of the season. Got Jake Wallman and Maurice Sider up top. Those two just complement each other way too well. I'm not breaking that beautiful relationship up right now. We're going to keep rolling with it. Then we got Ollie and Edvidson on the second line. Of course, I don't know why Leslie put Sherrod on the second line D. If I'm going to have that pile of poop anywhere on the team, it's going to be at the very bottom just to possibly help out the new boy coming in. Willy Wally right there, baby. Maybe get maybe just just hear me out before you say anything, Leslie. Maybe he will actually give some insight to this child on how to play, but not actually teach him how to play. Then I'll be really happy. Okay, so what insight is that? Hey, you see the guy who has the puck right now? Yeah, I don't care about your assignment. Go blow that and go kill that guy with the puck, please. Oh, wait a minute. They scored. Oh, sorry. That's not my fault, kid. Should have done better. Is that the insight that's going to happen? I'm hoping for some sort of better insight than that at this point. Well, you're not getting it. That's a very valid argument. I'm just hoping for the best because he's old as crap. (laughs) But let's go on from that because I don't think that's going to be a win-win at all. I just kind of want Sherrod to be off, but, you know, I had to toss him in there just because we got his contract. So whatever. Might as well not waste that much money. Then, of course, at the bottom, we got Husa because we have literally... Nobody else to put in that. But the kid's not doing bad. So I'm hoping for the next season he actually pulls it off a little bit better than we did this season, especially with our prospects coming up. I mean, Stevie Derrick, look at my lineup right now. I'll tell you right now, if we have this, doesn't matter who we have in that. We're going to do great. And then just because I love our boar on the walleyes, I want Kosaga to get pulled up at some point. I don't care when. I just want him to play a couple games just so I can watch him and the Red Wings make a jersey for him, and I'll get it instantly. Cosas. All right, so I just have – I really just have, like, one thing to point out. Like, I know this is, like, not supposed to be taken serious. This is just a mock and everything. Can Edvinson play right side? I didn't hear anything about that. I Anyone heard can play right side good if they just the go on that side. Exactly. Right, well, I, I wasn't it. giving him the option him at there. this point. <laughs> he's a D Don't and then you get a righty and he's going on the right side because I don't want Schrott up there. Works for me. Leslie, I can't remember. I'm sorry. Did you have Rasmussen in your lineup? Yeah. Derek he's, did not. Let me go back to it. Oh, it's Sec- like Derek uh, yeah, the injured guy. <laughs> he's injured. Wait, he what? Not right now. I used to be ready for next season. Derek didn't have uh, Rasmussen in his lineup. He forgot he was oh, he injured. Didn't? No. I didn't even notice that. I'm not going to lie. I completely <laughs> forgot about Rasmussen because hey, I haven't uh, watched him in a minute. Hey, sorry, <laughs> but I know uh, I know your kneecap is shattered and everything, but uh, pack your shit. You're off the team. Yeah, it looks like, you're, looks like you're getting injured the preseason, bud. You ain't making the opening yeah. roster. Sorry. Oh, oh, my. oh wait sorry. Minute. Wait, right now, let's state it. If that happens... You heard it here first. You're welcome. And I am oh, sorry yeah, uh, for putting that out in the universe. <laughs> sorry, Rass. Uh, yeah, the MRI came back negative. But I didn't get another MRI. Yeah, it's negative. Uh, bye. See you later. All right. Here's my mock opening night roster. Yeah, as you can see, I got Rasmussen, the tall boy, on the top line with Larkin and Raymond. I thought about putting Perron over Raymond, and I really did think really hard about putting Raymond on the third line just to see if maybe that young connection could happen between Berger and Verleno. But I just, Raymond's our best option at the top line, honestly, at that, or at this point instead of Perron. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Then you got Cop shipping, shifting over to the wing, Casper centering that second line with Perron. I figured having two old people uh, on the wing for Casper would do him really well, honestly. Just teach him the ropes. You got really hard shooting Perron and you got Cobb who's really good two way that can definitely show Casper 
the ropes in both those regards, you know, show them how to shoot and to play a two-way game as a center. Then, yeah, you got Berggren, Valeno, and Fabry on the third line. This is where things started to get tricky. Um, on the third line, I thought about adding Soderblom, but if he's not getting in the third line, then he's going to be getting you know, fourth line duties. And at that point, I don't want him to get fourth line. I think he's just more suited to play at that point in Grand Rapids. So I left him down there. Then the bottom line, yeah, you got Kubalik and I put Amadeus Lombardi at the center too, Derek. I don't think it's out of the realm to put him there as the four C just let him learn the role. You know, if he's only playing 10 to 12 minutes a night, I think that's fine for someone like him. Um, But then again, it just really all depends. Does, Grand Rapids needs centers too. Uh, we just don't know yet what their lineup's going to look like and how well these players are going to be coming out of training camp. But I think Almondes Lombardi could be one of those players. He's got a good shot. He's got a good two-way game. I mean, we mentioned that before, that he was voted by multiple coaches as one of the top players out of the OHL. So I expect great things from him eventually. Hopefully it's coming into next season making the opening night roster so yeah let's go ahead and jump into the defense no surprise here you got wallman and cider um i'm putting mata with johansson um yes johansson is supposedly playing on the right-handed side um i didn't want to give him the middle pairing due to the minutes and he's never played in the nhl but i figure with mata you know he could learn from him and that's someone that you really want to learn from he just knows how to do the little things right we talked about it before so i think that's a good pairing partner for him to learn from and then evanson and Sherat. at times we saw that late into the season when evanson was getting his nine game stint i think if you put Sherat over on the right side let evanson do his thing i think Sherat will be less of a liability plus you're putting him on the third pairing i mean evanson has to learn eventually too and i think you know like we talked about in the last episode where Edmondson has to come in and push Sherrod out and maybe Sherrod gets traded. Who knows? But right now, yeah, I have him on the bottom pairing. Um, worst case, you switch Sherrod and Johansson, but I don't see Lalone or Eisenman really putting Edmondson and Johansson together. I think that won't really go too well, but I could be wrong. I really could. Uh, then in that, I have Huso, and if I was going to put it back up there, you don't really have too many options, but I guess if I was to cheat, I guess I'm taking Nadelkovic, uh, depending on what kind of contract I can sign him at. Uh, Other than that, if I couldn't, then I guess it's either going to be Kosa. Unfortunately, I would feel bad for him. He'd just get blown out every night. Or uh, Letman, uh, the other goalie for Walleye. I think that's someone that could come in and probably do just as well as Helberg and Ned did, to be honest with you, at this point, the way that he's been playing uh, with the Toledo Walleye. Uh, but I do know that uh, Kosa has been taking the reins and starting a majority of those games now, which is nice to see. So that's my roster. That's my opening night roster. And let's go ahead and stop sharing that. Ooh. Oh, boys, I'm realizing now on top of Rasmussen, I also forgot about Fabry out there. How did I not realize he <laughs> What is wrong? You know what? I think I did. I did, too. I, I think pretty sure you did, huh. too. All right. All but right the good then. part is, guys, our defense was pretty on point with each other. I wasn't expecting that. There's only so much you could do at that point, though, right? I mean, like, we just have so many left-handed D prospects, too. That was just tough choosing who you wanted to put on the right side. I would have put Wallander in there. Derek, I like that you inserted Wallander in there. Um, I know that in Sweden he was playing on the right-handed side, though. So that's, that's what I that... saw on uh, League Prospects that he was going both ways. And I was like, okay, I'll take that. If he's going both ways, you got to start him off right away in the right, get him used to it. Like, I'll take that because, of course, he's doing great over there, like blowing it up. So he's getting a little conversion, give him a year, see what happens. Unfortunately, to say that, though, I do think either Johansson or Wallander will be traded in this offseason, whether if that's in the draft or somewhere else. I just think we have too many of those. If especially if Eisenman doesn't project either one of them being a right-handed defenseman since they both shoot left. There's nothing wrong with it, but that's not idealistic to do that. And he said that. He's like, I don't want to put Sherrod over on the right-hand side, but what else do I have? Nothing. So, yeah. 
Let us know in the comments what you guys thought about our opening night rosters, who you thought had the best one. Those two are Robbie Fabry haters, so don't don't like theirs. Derek doesn't like Rasmussen either. And they called Zadina. I like Bob. him, but I just forgot about him. They don't like Zadina either. I have his jersey. I'm no, a lover. No, not right, right now. At least they put him in the lineup. I could have put he him is, in Grand he Rapids. Made the lineup. He's not in the AHL. I almost put him in Grand Rapids on mine too. <laughs> <laughs> we have, at this point we all know he's going to start fourth line next year at the best uh, yeah at the best i mean i would be surprised i mean this season like we said this opening night roster season he didn't even make the the roster he was an extra man so i wouldn't be surprised going into this season it's the same thing or he's traded i mean <laughs> it's it is what it is at this point but we can save that for a lot that can happen episode. in the off season I mean, Lots that can happen. He might put pucks in the back of Otto's net with another team. We don't know. <laughs> All right, boys. Let's go ahead and jump into our last segment, the draft prospect profile of Leo Carlson. Derek was way better than mine. I liked his better. All right. Leo Carlson projects as a center or a winger i see him more as a winger when he does make it into the nhl shoots left he's 6'3 194 pounds according to elite prospects uh currently plays in the swedish hockey league with orbro i believe i'm pronouncing that right hk in 44 games this season he's put up 25 points 10 goals 15 assists before i go any further does anyone volunteer to give their insights on this player first We'll let Derek go first. I mean, why not? Yeah, I'll toss it out there. I mean, I didn't watch too much on him because obviously I was lazy and did maybe like an hour of research on the kid, which I still say is pretty good to look up anyone under the age of 18. But, you know, I mean, overall, like what he's doing in the league right now is crazy because obviously he's so young. I'm pretty sure he's, he's a late bloomer in December and he just turned 18 last year. And he's been in the Swedish League Hockey League for almost two years now. So he's been there, I believe, from what it looked like since he was 16, he was playing in that league. And that's an all-men's league that are destroying. Like, that's crazy to see. Like, especially with his, like, how calm he is with the puck, his puck handling skills, his protection, his playmaking. Like, he is able to just dance around every player out there just like they're standing there. It's a beautiful thing to see, especially when you see people in NHL still trying to do that right now, trying to get those digs, trying to get those fancy little moves. They can't do any of it, or they get picked off right away. You see this kid do it. I mean, obviously, not the NHL right now, but oh my god, he's making these kids look like they're standing still out there. I'm like, that's pretty good for somebody who does not have fast feet. Like, he's slow as crap out there. Not Okay, that's mean to say. He's not that slow. But for someone of this top tier performance, he is not the quickest, but his rest of his game, it looks like it honestly makes up for the fact that he can't skate that fast. And the fact, it's just, I'd say the way that, uh, I looked on a video earlier that uh, LQ Hockey, I believe, I'm trying to read my notes, I'm blonde as hell, hell, sorry everybody. Read into but your yeah, microphone LQ too. Hockey. LQ Hockey, my friends, on YouTube. Put it the best way possible. He is buttery. Like, oof. No one can touch him. Slides right through. I was like, that's the best explanation you could possibly give to the kid right now. Especially with all his highlights. If you watch him, he has some pure hands. Just moves right through the defenseman without getting touched even. I'm like, buttery, yeah. He's a slippery yeah. little motherfucker out there. Sorry everyone for cussing. That just kind of came out. <laughs> go ahead Leslie you can go next man it really says something about this draft and how deep it is that this is our fourth prospect that we're talking about and in any other draft you could make a case that he goes number one overall if he was last year he'd be number one overall if he was next year he's number one overall if he's 10 years 5 years down the line this kid is talented is what I'm trying to get at and he's a big boy at 18 years old you know he's 6'3 194 pounds that's that's a big boy right there. Not a whole lot of eighteen year olds are that big. I mean, that's bigger than Connor Bedard for sure, at least five inches taller. So I have to imagine that when he comes in the league right away, he's gonna be a presence out there that I think a lot of players are not gonna know. And just to compare his stats, 
just for our sake, because we want to relate him to our to our team, the Detroit Red Wings, if he does somehow get picked by us. In this year's uh, Swedish League season, he has 25 points in 44 games. And in in the case of Lucas Raymond, his first season in the SHL after being drafted was 18 points. And look at how Raymond did his first year here. He was almost a 60-point player. It would definitely stand to reason that Leo Carlson could hop in right away and score 60 points. And I also want to remind you that Lucas did have to play one season in the SHL before coming over, although he did kind of just crack in the roster right away, didn't even go to Grand Rapids. I think Leo Carlson is coming over right away to whatever team drafts him, and he's taken over. He may even be able to play in the top six, depending on what team picks them and what their roster is looking like. This kid is extremely smart. I'd say in terms of hockey IQ, he's up there with uh, Mitchkov, Fantilli, maybe not in the Bedard range because Bedard is Bedard. You can't really compare him to anyone else. But yeah, he's a very smart player. I'd say playmaking is one of his strong suits. And my favorite word, compete. He is a fierce competitor, man. And I think that's a combination of being already at that size I mentioned at his age and playing in a men's league for the past two years. I mean, he was playing when he was 17 years old in the men's league. That doesn't happen over in the SHL. I mean, I'm trying to think of who the last guy was to do that at 17. I didn't even think Lucas Raymond did that. So that's remarkable. That just shows you what level this guy's talent is on. In fact, I do have some stats right here to back up how well he's doing in his first season. So, in his first SHL draft eligible season, he has his 25 points. That ranks number five all time. And who's ahead of him? The Sedin brothers, Nick Backstrom, and Elias Lindholm. That's pretty damn good company to keep right there. I... Would not be surprised at all if he is just as good as those players throughout his career. He is a phenom over there in the Swedish League. The one thing that I can knock about his game, because I can't just be pouring sugar on him the whole time, you know, we have to be a little critical of these players, so we know what to look out for and what the teams want to focus on. He isn't the best skater. That doesn't necessarily mean that he's slow. I mean, he's not Andrew Crystal out there, which we'll get to in a later episode. He, he's a good skater, but I think it's just not there quite yet in, at the NHL level. So I have to imagine that whatever team takes him, they will be teaching him that all throughout training camp. And his shot needs a little bit of work. It's good, but it's not to the level of like a Mitchkov or a Fantilli. So those are my two knocks against him. Overall, though, I'd be ecstatic if the Red Wings picked him. I think if they're moving up to one or two, they're taking either Fantilli or Bedard. I couldn't imagine that they would take this kid, Leo Carlson. But if they were sitting there at number three or four position, that would be an option right there. I know how much they love their Swedes. And I have to imagine that Steve Eisman would be banging the table for him if they were in that position to get him. Man, Leslie, you already took away what I was going to ask you both after we got down and talk about this. I already it's had the question going mind. for it. it was either... I know. I was like, I was going to ask you guys, Carson Ventilli. Are we getting silly for Van Tilly or are we getting low for Leo? I didn't know which one you might pick, but at that point, you answered it very quickly. Did you just ad lib that one? That was pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. I wasn't ready for I it. I could see the hamster wheel turning for you to think about that one. My brain actually broke at that point, so uh, no one ever expect that from me again. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> I promise. Uh, Thank you, Zach. Yeah. Just to add a little bit more on to what Derek and Leslie said, I'll just change up what they said just into my own words. Uh, to add on to that, though, um, NHL Draft Pros on YouTube, I like to watch his uh, highlight videos, and he does a good job at breaking down players uh, and, and analyzing their play and their strengths and their weaknesses. But in, in the part of the video, you know, he shows uh, some other notable players that played out of the SHL in their draft year. Uh, but for Leo Carlson, he finished the season with 0.57 points per game. Um, some notable players below him would be William Nylander, who finished with 0.32 points, and then Lucas Raymond and Marco Casper um, 
I, I think those are some pretty noticeable names, especially us as Red Wings fans. You know, we have two of those players. And then Nylander, everyone likes Nylander and what he does. Um, the players that were ahead of him, William Eklund, that's a uh, San Jose prospect that was drafted in 2021 or 2022 draft. And he finished just 0 0.01 points higher than he did in his draft year. And then Elias Lindholm, uh, was at the top on his list at 0.63 points per game. So he's up there, yeah. And like Leslie said, you saw what Raymond did in his first season coming into the NHL. So just imagine what Leo Carlson can do if he's that much better uh, right now playing in the SHL. Um, and then Leslie mentioned something about him being top five. Um, I, I don't know what the top five was, but when I looked it up, all time per season for players under 19 in the Swedish Hockey League, he does rank fifth all-time points per game, um, and that's 25 in those 44 games. Uh, the players ahead of him were Samuel Fagimo. He's an L.A. Kings prospect, supposedly. Nicholas Backstrom, Magnus PRV, and then Elias Lindholm. Leslie, was yours for the playoffs? Um, I think this is including the regular season plus playoffs because this what I'm reading off is 11 goals and 34 points. So I think it's including playoffs too. And I, I must have forgot to mention that. I thought I did, but maybe I didn't. No, I do sure. believe he no, is one just... of the top producing playoff players too right now with points percentage. Well, I can tell you right now what he did do in the playoffs. Um, in 13 games, he had one goal and eight assists for nine points. So yeah, pretty good production there in the playoffs. Yeah, no kidding. So, yeah, that would make sense, too, then. So, yeah, I mean, both in the playoffs plus regular season and then just the regular season, he's finishing top five. So that speaks a lot of volume. And like you guys said, you know, it's his second season, pretty much full season uh, in the SHL. So that speaks a lot of volumes. Um, but other than that, you know, this the things that I've noticed about him, his skating mechanics need work. He's not very explosive on his strides. That's OK. He just needs to kind of work on those things a little bit. He doesn't really bend the knee that much when he does want to make those power strides. Um, passing and hockey IQ are really strong. That's definitely some things that I noticed. And he knows how to start the plays, and he's the one who's driving those plays into the offensive zone. He's really good at reading the ice and just knows how to make the best decision before uh, and as he's getting the puck on his stick, you know, so it's tough to get him off the puck as well, you know, when he's in the corners or even if he's like driving through the middle of the ice. And that's something they really likes to do. He's more of one of those go on the inside than outside players. And I did see this little thing about him where he kind of gets nervous a little bit when pucks do get into the corners and he has to chase. He's someone that would rather try to cut around the net while trying to pick it up with speed, then try to stop, collect it, and then try to beat the opposing defenseman in a puck battle for it. So that's something that he might have to work on a little bit. I don't think that that's a big issue, to be honest. His shot is pretty good. It's not the hardest shot. It's not like Metzvay Michkov's shot, but he's very accurate with his shot. Um, and he loves to try and get into the middle of the ice, like I said. So if that's someone who likes to go into the slot in front of the net, you know, get in those danger areas where you can put up the points. Yeah, go ahead and do that. That's the stuff that these scouts really like to see in these general managers. That's what's going to get them to draft you. Play some really good defense, too. Uh, he knows how to back check. Uh, when he needs to, and then isn't afraid to take the puck away from opposing players. Like he can stick lift, he can hit people, he can do all those things. Like you guys said, he's a very big boy, and he's only going to get bigger. He might not get taller, but he's going to get bigger. But look at Elmer Soderblom. When they drafted him, I'm pretty sure he was like six foot two, and then by the time now he's six eight or some crap like that. It's pretty yeah, insane. He's a behemoth. Yes. He's grow. Yeah. So um, overall. There's a lot of reasons why this kid's going to go in the top five. It's a, if it's not fourth, he's going to be fifth. Um, the next player that we'll touch on is, well, we'll actually keep that a surprise. I actually don't know who we want to talk about next. Uh, this, this is, is where things kind of start. Yeah, and, and some people even have Leo Carlson going before Metvey Michkov. I mean, we talked about that, right? That the Russian factor, the size factor might play a role into it. Some GMs might be like, why are we going to go after someone who's 5'10", 
5'11", however big Metve Mitchkov was, 170 pounds, when we can get this 6'3", man child right now and we could probably insert him into our lineup right now there might be teams that are willing to do that take him at three um i have him personally i have leo carlson at three right now and i would put mitch kov at four um yeah i just think leo carlson whoever takes him is willing to work on the little things that he just needs to improve on it's not a lot if you can work on the stride a little bit more, be a little more powerful in your legs, that would be great. But he's good at protecting the puck, and he's got a decent shot, and he knows how to play, how to drive a play. So I, I like a lot of things about him. I don't think that there's really anything that you could downgrade him on in terms of what he brings to the table as a player. So this is someone that I, yeah, Leslie's right. If it was probably any other draft, he could be one or two. Unfortunately, this draft is just so deep. You got Bedard, Fantilli, Mitchkov, Carlson, Will Smith, Zach Benson. It's There's a lot of good players in this draft, and we're thankful for it. And it's going to be great when we see all these people playing ten, five to ten years from now on all their teams. So, yeah, I, I like what I see out of them, and it's going to suck when we won't have the option or ability to draft them unless we move up somehow in the draft. I think it's the Sharks or someone like that has the fourth, uh, is fourth in the standings for the draft lottery right now. So uh, that's a team that already drafted William Eklund, who's a Swedish hockey player as well. So that would be good for them. I would hate it, but that would be good for them. But yeah, that's what I got on Leo Carlson. Anyone else have their closing statements that they want to add before we talk about what's upcoming? Oh, I want the Giants. Get us all the massive players on our team. I just want to strike fear into anybody we go up against, and I'll be happy. Six foot and above. Let's go with that for the Red Wings at this point. Yeah, that actually reminds me. I did want to say that Leo Carlson is really checks a lot of boxes for Steve Eisman. Number one, and maybe most important, he's Swedish. Number two, he's gigantic. Number three, he can play center. He can play wing. Number four, he's very smart. Number five, he can compete. And because of those five reasons that I listed, Gary Bettman is looking at me and saying, nah, kid, you're picking ninth. Have fun picking whatever you're going to get because you're going to get it and you're going to like it. So, yeah, cool. All right. That's all I have. That's it for today, honestly. This is, like I said, this was going to be a shorter episode than the previous two. Those were long-winded, unfortunately. We know it's tough for you guys to find almost two hours of your time during the day to listen to our voices. We know it's hard. Oh, buddy, it's hard for me. It's very hard, for me hard to speak that long. I know. <laughs> so what, what's upcoming for us on Hockey Town University? Well, to be honest with you guys, I don't know what we're going to do for the next episode. But we have a lot of exciting things coming your way. We are working on some ideas for you, the fans, to show appreciation how much we love you guys. Yeah, upcoming, I really have no idea. Uh, next episode, we'll probably be doing the same thing, covering the playoffs, U18 World Championship. I continuously love watching all of those because it just gets me geeked up for what Iserman could do for us uh, heading into the future. Um Prospect profile, Will Smith or Zach Benson? Who would be taken fifth? Who knows? You guys are just going to have to stick around and wait until the next episode that airs on Monday when we record Sunday night. So let's go ahead and close it off with some final thoughts, boys. Take it away. One at a time. No rush. Oh my god, I'm going for it right now. Beat Leslie. Got you. Then do it. Well, boys, it's been a great another night with, uh, you know, no Red Wing hockey going on for the second week in a row. But at least we get to watch people beat the crap out of each other in the playoffs. So that is the golden line in this entire uh, bootiness that we can't watch the Red Wings play. And if anybody wants to watch, hopefully some drama ensue, go look at it. Lalone and uh, Cooper uh, going back and forth with each other about Bevelski and Nett. 
I'm I'm slightly hoping we get some drama out of that one. It's very low key now, but I'm hoping it builds, and I'm gonna be watching it because ooh, ex assistant coach against current head coach. I want I want to see some drama. I'm just about the drama in this league right now. Let's go. My final thoughts are, I am having a lot of fun watching the playoffs, but I can't lie to you, boys. I want nothing more in my life than Red Wings playoff hockey. And I'm not going to sit here and say we better get it next year or that's it. I'm a full-time Islanders fan now. I renounce my fandom. I won't be saying that. Maybe I will, depending on how mad I am. But we just need play of hockey back in hockey town. I know that there's players on this roster. Dylan Larkin, Mo Sider, Marco Casper. He probably will be on the team next year. Andrew Kopp was really good in the playoffs. I know there's players on this team that will do very well in the playoffs. Hell, maybe Sherrod will do good in the playoffs. Maybe he's just been saving his body and his brain for playoff hockey. I don't know. Maybe that's a possible explanation for what the hell is going on with him. But God, I want playoff hockey for Detroit. And I don't really care what it takes to get there. Make a crazy trade in the offseason. Get a, get a Debrinket. Get a Kyle Connor. Get a whatever else is out there. I just need it in my life. I need it in my veins. If we don't make it next year, it'll be almost a decade. I don't want that. I understand that's not Steve's fault, but I don't want that. So I guess that was just my little rant, just saying how sick I am of just watching the playoffs and just sitting there and being like, yeah, this game's good. I wish I cared about these teams, though. I don't want to do that anymore. So Red Wings, knock it out the park next season. Go out there, snatch some souls, kill the opposition, do whatever it takes to win. Please, please bring playoff hockey back to the D. And let's go Islanders. I mean, what Red Wings. The Sorry. What was that? Jesus. All right. Before my final thoughts, yeah, to talk about today's rosters that we built. Um, no offense to you guys, but this is including my roster. By no means do I think that it, any of our rosters were playoff caliber rosters. I mean, it's like we said, we didn't add any free agents. We didn't add any prospects. Even if we did get Bedard or Fantilli, they wouldn't be included in this exercise. But we will be doing another one probably towards before the regular season of next year starts. So make sure you're on the lookout for that. Um, but yeah, as much as Leslie said, it sucks. You know, we don't really want to go into a decade long of no playoffs. But, you know, maybe all you need is a little luck. Maybe maybe we'll get that more than once in the draft. Just a that's little literally bit of all we need is luck. At this point, all we need is luck, and then we're good. That's literally all we need, Zach, which so, sucks because we won't get it. So other than that, before I go into final thoughts, the Panthers are beating the Boston Bruins 2-1 to one currently. I don't know Love what it. period Keep it, it is. It might be the second already now. Yeah, it's, a, it's the end of the second period. So if you're a Bruins fan, suck it. I'm sorry. It is what it is, but you guys will probably go on to the next round anyways. And then don't forget, Seattle Kraken will beat the Colorado Avalanche because the Avalanche sucked their Disneyland franchise. And my final Kraken are, go Red Wings. Islanders suck. My Snapchat AI even said it. Yeah, They're going to lose. And uh, once again, let's go Red Wings. Take care, everyone. Also, don't forget, hit the subscribe button if you're new. Thanks for joining us, watching us. For those of you returning, we love you oh so much. Thank you for continuing to watch us. Uh, if you're on Spotify, make sure you're rating five stars. Make sure you're following us as well. Get those notifications. Hit the notification bell on YouTube. Leave a comment. Let us know what you thought about our rosters. And as always, let's close out tonight. Goodbye, everyone. Your AI is dumb as a bag of bricks. Oh, boy. <laughs>